<laughs> oh yeah. Hey everybody, Eric Larridge here. Today we're going to be tearing into a couple cheaply made subwoofers by Sony. These came with a couple home theater in a box sort of things. Now they both seem like the same sort of unit, however, they have different model numbers. They must be from different years or different systems. Now they both have six and a half inch woofers and an impedance of one and a half ohms, which is a little weird, but kind of common in this home theater in a box stuff. So our model numbers are SSWS95 and SSWS74. All right, I'm gonna get these things plugged in, fire the amp on, and we're gonna see what they can do, if they can do anything at all. <laughs> I've never tested them yet. Oh, there we go. Thought something was wrong. something shaking in there. There's the connector that went on the back of the home theater system. All right, let's get these grills off first. marker out here. Whoa, uh, it's hard to write on these when they're going. <laughs> so it seems like these are the exact same cabinets here. The uh, wood portion anyway. One of them here has this little extender that made one of them a little bit longer. <laughs> but otherwise I think this is the same speaker in here. Rubber surround. Other than, you know, the different uh, coating on this one. Actually, it's the same dust cap, so you know what? I think it's the same speaker with a different cone. Doesn't take long for them to distort. No, these are very weak. So I just realized these are actually out of phase of each other. So right now one's sucking in as the other one pushes out. It's kind of like, if I put them like this, it's like a paint shaker effect. <laughs> I did notice when I plugged the second driver in that the base was lacking, so I figured something was up with that. 
So I have seven hertz playing here and you can see the speakers are going in opposite directions and that actually has a huge impact on the frequency response of the system if you have one of these drivers going out of phase as they call it. In this case adding the second subwoofer actually decreased the bass. This one is cancelling out this one. Now I'm pretty sure this one is in the correct polarity. It seems like it's pushing outwards. Now they're synchronized. Oh shit! Yeah, I was looking at the computer screen and all of a sudden there was a big cloud of smoke in my face. <laughs> There's the protect on the amplifier. But this thing is just spewing smoke like crazy. Oh, wow, look at that. No wonder it went into protect mode. <laughs> oh man, the coil puked its guts out. You see that? There's your problem. It's the easiest way to get the magnets out, by the way. So here's our nice toasty magnet. <laughs> Coil stuck inside there. Alright, let's reset this amplifier and get the other one going. Woo! A little ground shock there. Alright, let's see if this other one still works. Nice. Fix my speed holes. <laughs> All right, I'm cranking the bass up, getting ruthless here. <laughs> oh yeah. Here's the comparison on those magnets. Definitely the same thing. The first one is still warm too. <laughs> that's crazy. These things hold heat a while. Well, that's about it for these crappy Sony subwoofers. If you enjoyed today's content, be sure to give the video a like, drop a comment, or subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day.